I grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s where the idea was to be a strong, independent woman. We had hits like Survivor from Destiny's Child to Miss Independent from Neo. So how did we get from that to the rise of the so-called femininity coach? And does it mean that we've been doing it wrong all along? There seems to be an influx of femininity channels. More specifically, channels and advice that's aimed towards black women. And everywhere I turn, I seem to be assaulted by yet another video telling me 10 things that I need to do to become more feminine or to exude feminine energy. But has anybody else noticed that they all tend to look the same and sound the same? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about femininity as a concept and how it's specifically targeted at black women. Let's face it, we all want to have healthy, productive, enriching relationships with each other. And if there's a guide or a book or some tips that we can follow that will get that to us, why wouldn't we do it? However, in recent years, we have had this whole concept of femininity and specifically black femininity with the influx of the so-called femininity coaches. They have massive followings on social media and we've had a few people who have gained a lot of notoriety and almost like a cult-like status as a result of what they are preaching. So at first glance, what they're saying seems relatively harmless and almost makes sense. When you delve deeper, you realize that there are quite a few flaws in this argument. What does it mean to be feminine? Well, if you are listening to these channels, it tends to boil down into a particular set of attributes, which is you must have long, flowy, straightened hair. And if you're a black woman, you can get this by having a weave, a wig, hair extensions. Your makeup must be artfully applied, not too colorful, not too outlandish. Your nails must be a certain amount using muted colors. You must have a certain wardrobe, mostly dresses and skirts because they're feminine and you must wear heels. It doesn't matter whether you're just going to the supermarket or walking your dog. Heels are non-negotiable. Don't only have rules and specifications for your outward appearance, but also your speech you're supposed to have a soft, breathy voice. So your job, being a feminine woman, is as a counterpart to the guy. So the more I delved into the requirements and the more videos I watched, I started to realize one thing. This is all very performative, as in what you look, what you sound like. There's less emphasis on who you are, what you do, or if it is, it's in relation to what you do as a counterpart to the guy. And I actually feel quite belittled as a woman that my whole experience of being born as a woman is just reduced down to my physical attributes. That just seems to be it. A lot of other people have criticized femininity channels for this particular issue, that it's very reductive and it's centering itself on what men like If you were to listen to the femininity guru, they believe that certain attributes are more feminine instinctively and some are masculine. Feminine attributes tends to be the more soft attributes like being nurturing, whereas being ambitious, being confident, being a go-getter are inherently masculine attributes. I disagree with that completely. I believe that we all, to a greater or lesser extent, have these attributes. Some of us have more of one direction and the others less so. And this is to do with lots of different influences, like your family, your culture and upbringing. There are some men out there that are very nurturing. It doesn't make them any less masculine than a woman who is very competitive and aggressive and stubborn in getting what she wants. It's a very crude way at best of ascribing different characteristics just on the basis of whether you happen to have an XX chromosome or an XY chromosome. As a result of classing these attributes as masculine and feminine, it's like a double-edged sword because if 
you are on the lucky side and you fit within the group that's supposed to have these attributes let's say that i'm a woman and i'm naturally compassionate that's good right because that means i'm feminine but what if i'm a woman and my idea is to be the ceo of a fortune 500 company does that mean that i'm lacking the femininity gene that i'm deficient and now i have to go take a crash course in femininity to make up for it this is also harming men too we have issues around men's mental health not being able to come forward and talk about their emotions and feelings because that's feminine and not being able to go after hobbies and interests that might be seen as more feminine rather than labeling something as masculine energy or feminine energy i prefer to use the words yin and yang the concept of yin and yang comes from taoism and chinese culture and by removing the labels of gender it makes it much more neutral and it means that anyone can possess any of these attributes in greater or lesser forms another reason that i'm so uncomfortable with the femininity concept is the fact that it's very much focused on what men like they reduce your value purely on your ability to attract and keep a man and we all know how harmful that line of thinking is it's kept many people in relationships that they had no business in being it's meant that people that are not currently in relationships or have gone through relationship breakdowns carry not only the weight of the relationship not working out but a sense of guilt shame and failure because they weren't able to keep a man so it makes me think what does it mean to be a woman and what does it mean to be feminine is it that my role is to be attractive to men and what does it mean to have a good successful relationship what about the relationship that you have that's the most important of them all and that is the relationship with yourself shouldn't that be the relationship that's prioritized above anything else there is nothing wrong with wanting to find a partner and have a good solid relationship but if you're doing all of these things in an effort to appeal to somebody else without first standing back and thinking about who you are as a person what you like and attending to your needs first is doing yourself a disservice and worse yet it leads to a group of people who are out there dating with no concept of who they are and what they actually like and instead they focused all of their attention on i must get a man i must get a man i must get a man but sis what do you do when you find him it tends to see women that supposedly profit from this femininity concept in a very narrow way time after time they keep naming the same names and they're usually celebrities who are good looking and seem to have a good life to external appearances but we all know that appearances can be deceiving and what you see out there in the tabloids the blogs the news articles doesn't necessarily capture what's going on inside a marriage or inside a relationship usually when these couples come together everybody's using them as couple goals relationship goals purely on the basis of how they look and it's only when the relationship falls apart or some scandal happens that the real truth comes out to the surface women that supposedly lucked out seem to have captured a very high value man to us they look like they're winning but their stories often have sad endings let's go back in history and look at a few women marilyn monroe and the tragic ending of her life anna nicole smith she did all the right things according to the book she even ended up getting into a hypergamous marriage and she seemed to be winning but look she ended up having a disastrous and tragic ending look at britney spears this is another woman that at the height of her career she was a desirable woman who had fame and lots of men found her attractive and i'm sure if we were to dig back into other people you will realize that a lot of the women that supposedly were winning when you look beneath the surface they really weren't winning but you'll be hard pressed to find any of these femininity coaches that will tell you that 
everybody just promotes if you do this 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 you will end up and you will secure the bag and your life will be taken care reality has often a different way of ending things how much should you change yourself in order to appeal to someone else do we even have to and if we do to what extent is acceptable and what extent is going too far these are all discussions that we need to be having i think that these femininity coaches are not as innocent as they seem they've come in and taken over the self-improvement aspects and they've been very successful because they've identified their niche market which is black women or women of a particular demographic and they've really narrowed down their target market so from a marketing perspective they've done really well before you watch another video or you subscribe to another channel i really want you to just take a moment and just think about what you're really getting from this and whether it's really meeting your emotional needs how do you feel about yourself about your relationships and where you are after watching these videos these are my opinions when all said and done and for me i've chosen to remove myself from that whole femininity aspect part of their dangers lie in the fact that they give out advice under the guise of common sense and self-improvement but a lot of the advice that they give is actually quite damaging to men and women if you have any opinions on this topic then drop them down in the comments and we can have a bit of a discussion if you've liked this video then why not go ahead and give me a thumbs up and if you're new here, why not consider subscribing? I have tons of other videos that's worth checking out if you've got a moment or two or three.